Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am excited to be chatting with Nabil Manji from Governing Council member FIS WorldPay. Uh, Nabil is the head of crypto and Web3, and uh, we are going to do a little bit of a background on who WorldPay is, and then we're going to dive into uh, some of the things that they announced earlier this fall. So hi, Nabil. How are you? Hey, Zenobi. I'm well, thanks. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Um, okay, so most people, I think, know FIS and WorldPay, but for those who don't or who might be newer to the Hedera ecosystem, can you give... Um, you know, some background on what is the company? What do you guys do? What's your mission and vision? Sure. Yeah. So I like to say we're one of the largest companies that a lot of people have never heard of, but probably use every day. Um, so FIS as a whole, uh, you know, Snapshot is about a $15 billion revenue company, about 70,000 employees around the world. And really, um, we're a core technology and infrastructure and service provider to different financial institutions and to merchants around the world. Uh, we've got three high-level business units. One is what we call banking solutions. Uh, it does core infrastructure and technology and business process outsourcing for banks. So if you think about a bank account, the, the core of that is a ledger system. Well, FIS builds the core ledger for thousands of banks around the world. So if you ever go on your online banking account and effectuate a transaction or want to look at your balance, chances are it's being provided by a FIS banking core. Um, second is what we call capital market solutions, which is again, very similar um, technology services for asset managers in the capital market space. So think about uh, hedge fund trading platforms, pension fund asset management systems, stuff like that. Uh, and then the third business is what we call WorldPay, which is the part of the business I work in. Uh, and WorldPay is the world's largest payment processor. So this year we'll process about $2.2, $2.3 billion in consumer payments. Uh, what does it actually mean? Uh, essentially, what we do is we allow businesses, large and small, around the world to accept payments from consumers like you and I. So we basically give businesses the ability to accept Visa, MasterCard, Apple Pay, Google Pay, local payment methods, and then, of course, provide all the uh, services around that that you would expect. Things like fraud and risk management, reporting, reconciliation, et cetera. Yeah, so probably, you know, as you're going about your day to day life, you are engaging with back end world pay services probably multiple times a day without even knowing it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And, you know, WorldPay has been on the council for a little while now, and you all have been working on some solutions. Um, you know, I know I was on stage at TechCrunch last year with one of your colleagues talking a little bit about that. This year at Money 2020, you started talking about the proof of reserve system. Um, can you tell our audience what that is and what you're building out? Yeah, sure. And, you know, on the council, yeah, I was just thinking about it. It's almost five years coming up. So that that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, when we last spoke, I, I talked a bit about our USDC settlement solution and essentially what that is um, for folks to kind of understand where the proof of reserves comes in is today, if you're a client of WorldPay and you're accepting, you know, Visa and MasterCard payments or Apple Pay, Google Pay, whatever it is, we essentially offer you the ability to receive settlement for those payments in a variety of fiat currencies. So maybe if you're a European business, you might want to accept settlement in Euro and Polish Zloty um, and Swiss franc or whatever else. Uh, maybe if you're a U.S. merchant, you just want to accept USD, uh, et cetera. So essentially, because we're such a global company, we have all these different settlement currencies to mix and match depending on what our clients want. Uh, what we did earlier this year is we added USDC as a settlement currency. So now if you're a WorldPay client, you can come to us and say, hey, I want to accept consumer payments from cards and e-wallets and whatever else, but I'd actually like to receive USDC. I don't want to receive fiat. So we say, okay, great. We can do that for you. That's a pretty big step. I know you sort of just said, yeah, sure. No problem. But <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was something we worked on for quite a while. And that was what we, we spoke about last time. But what we've done is 
we've essentially enhanced that with what we call a proof of reserves um, value added services or dashboard or dashboard, excuse me, on top of the settlement service. So the reason we did this was was really two or threefold. So one is outside of the crypto ecosystem, when you say the word stablecoin, some people don't have the best you know association with that word. A lot of people might remember Terra Luna um, or think about you know some of the the stable coins that haven't gone so well. And so what we did is we said, hey, you know, when we settle you USDC, we want to give you confidence that actually all the fiat that we received and processed on your behalf actually went uh, to this USDC. There's no funny business going on between WorldPay and Circle. Um, so kind of tying into that broader proof of reserves theme that's, you know, taken place in the crypto industry since you know the last year, 18 months or so. Um, the second is one of the the double edged swords or kind of blessing and a curse of crypto is, you know, you, you can take a wallet or a coin and you can kind of see everywhere it's been and everyone it's transacted with. And, you know, there were some clients or some people who might say, Hey, I really want to accept USDC settlement, but I'm really worried that maybe that stable coin or that particular asset might've been used for some illicit activity in the past. And I don't want to be associated with that. So what we actually do is we mint fresh USDC uh, for every settlement. And we actually provide a live data feed of that where you can reconcile and validate that um, to be true. So again, we're saying not only have we received and settled all the fiat that your customers pays you with, with cards or you know, mobile wallets or whatever, we're actually also not sending you, you know, some weird stable coin that's got a tainted past. You're actually getting something that's kind of clean and fresh. Um, so th those were two of the, the kind of key factors. And then the third one I would say is just, you know, one of the benefits that putting settlement on chain and using something like a stable coin gives you is the ability to kind of have real time visibility of where your money is. So today in like the traditional payments world, let's send, I send you, let's say I send you a wire, Zenobia, I owe you some money for something. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say I owe you some money. So I go to my bank account. So I'm in the UK, you're sitting in the US. So I'm going to send you a wire and I could go initiate that wire and, you know, it'll say processing or whatever. But let's say you don't get it tomorrow or the day after. Neither you nor I have any uh, like visibility to see where that is. I would have to call my bank or you would have to call your bank. You'd have to give someone the wire reference number. They'd have to go log on to some system, run a trace or a report. And hopefully that report actually says where the money is and why it's held up. A lot of times it actually won't. But they maybe you'll get a call a day or two later saying, Hey, here's where it is. But actually what kind of happens is sometimes the money just shows up before you even get that call back. It kind of works itself out. So in cross border payments today, you just don't have visibility into where money is. You just, you, you just kind of rely on the other party having done what they say they were supposed to do. And then that the money's going to show up. Um, but in blockchain, you can have that visibility. So the third thing we really said is, Hey, for all these USDC settlement transactions, in real time, we're going to send you the transaction has so you can see if it hasn't confirmed yet or if it's stuck somewhere, you know, the wallet that it went to and from, all the amount, et cetera. So it just gives payments teams at our clients a bit more autonomy and control and visibility of where the money is um, and saves a lot of, I would say, manual work that would have otherwise ensued to try and trace down money. And that piece is being written on Hedera? Yes. So basically what we're doing is when we when we do this so-called proof of reserve, the way it works is we are basically sending uh, three concrete data points for every single settlement transaction to uh, the HCS, Hedera Consensus Service. So what we do is we send data point number one when we send the fiat to circle for the USDC to be minted. So we'll actually send the data saying, hey, WorldPay has wired circle the money, and then you've got all the metadata behind it. Second is we send a data notification and proof point that the USDC has actually been minted. What does that actually mean? It means circles received the fiat and they've actually minted it in the USDC. So you get a confirmation and validation that that's actually happened. And then the third data point is when we actually instruct the settlement of the USDC from our wallet, where it was minted into, to the merchant's wallet. So basically for that whole like life cycle of that transaction, we're posting the data in real time to HCS and each merchant of ours gets a unique HCS topic. 
And that's what powers the dashboard or like the user experience on top of that, where, you know, a merchant gets a bespoke dashboard and it basically has for each of those transactions and each of those data points, you can get a confirmation from HCS, like this has happened or this hasn't happened yet. Um, and the way it isolates, you know, one merchant's data versus another merchant's data is via that unique topic ID. And so in your previous example, you know, you sort of mentioned, and I think a lot of people have experienced this, you know, you send the wire, you cross your fingers and maybe like anywhere from a day to like four or five days later, you know, the, the recipient gets the money. Um, in this new system, how, what is the, the time for each of those three steps? Yeah, it's a good question. So the money movement from us to circle, um, because of the geographies we're doing it in, typically will happen the same day. Uh, and then when Circle receives the fiat to actually minting the USDC, I don't know exactly what their SLA is, but it's pretty close to instant. So as soon as the fiat hits their account, they mint the USDC. And then, of course, when we instruct the settlement, um, it's just a normal blockchain transaction. So depending on whether the transaction's going on Ethereum or Hedera or Polygon or whatever it might be, you know, that could take a couple seconds or a couple minutes. And so, you know, this is all going on behind the scenes, right? So the merchant um, can see the proof of it, but does not have to interact or do anything special. Nope. Just a online web dashboard that they can log into. They don't need to host a node. Uh, we're using the, uh, the Archaea Mira node service on Hedera to feed all the data. So nobody needs to host a node. Nobody needs to know anything about blockchain. You can just kind of log on and see, hey, you know, where's my money from WorldPay today? And you could see, oh, it's been sent to Circle, but it hasn't been minted yet. Or, oh, it's been minted, but it hasn't been sent yet. Or, oh, it's been sent and it should be in my wallet. So if I go check my wallet balance, it should be there. Or maybe it's been sent, but it's still confirming. So you can kind of see exactly where your money is, you know, on any given day, which is just this, uh, this ability that doesn't exist in the fiat world today. You just assume it's going to show up in your bank account the same time every day. And if it doesn't, you, you call your WorldPay rep and you're like, where's my money? <laughs> and, you know, I think this is really interesting because it is an example of improving a Web2 process, but leveraging the same sort of experience and interface that people are used to, but saying, look how much better we can make it by putting these Web3 technologies in the back end, but we're not expecting you to do all these things that you typically associate with a Web3 application. 100%. And I'm obviously biased here because, you know, the team at WorldPay is the one that built this, but... um I think what you're seeing generally in financial services is the integration and iteration uh, from an innovation perspective that's happening with blockchain is it's really incremental. And I did not intend for that to be a very alliterative statement with all those eyes, but it was. But anyways, yeah, it, it's not like we've just rewired payments and completely redone the way money's moving. We're just using the benefit of it being on chain to provide this extra degree of visibility um, that you just can't get in web to. And it sounds like, you know, you all have been very thoughtful in terms of kind of what the steps that need to happen to make this sort of more and more integrated in terms of the merchant experience and the consumer experience. Um, so where do you go from here? That's a good question. So yeah, right now we're really focused on the USDC settlement side with proof of reserve. Um, we're only offering that right now in a couple of geographies. So we are looking at uh, launching that in other markets where our clients uh, have presence and would like us to offer it. So I would say take taking what we built and just distributing it more broadly across our client base. That's number one. Uh, second is we are, of course, keeping a very close eye on what's going on in the stablecoin space more broadly. So maybe adding other USD stablecoins or maybe adding things like a euro or GBP stablecoin. Those are things that we we keep our eye on. And, you know, if the demand is there and the market's there, we'll we'll definitely look at more seriously. Um, the other thing that's kind of closely related to stable coins, or at least in my mind and some people's mind is, is CBDCs. So we're keeping a very close pulse on what's going on in the CBDC landscape, particularly in, uh, the major geographies where we operate and what that would mean for integration with this service as well. So I think like anything and everything that is going on in the crypto payments world, we, we probably have a good pulse of it. Uh, but we're really focused right now, I would say, on expanding stablecoin offerings and then keeping our pulse more closely on CBDCs um, as that evolves. And so as a consumer, if you are able to um, uh, if you're able to either pay in crypto or, you know, as a merchant, if you're able to receive in crypto, there's a very good chance that um, that that is going through you all. 
Yeah, I would say it's more on the second. So we we actually don't, and this surprises a lot of people, we we don't facilitate crypto payment acceptance. Um, so like if a merchant of WorldPay came to us and said, hey, WorldPay, can you enable me to accept Bitcoin or Ethereum or something so that a consumer can walk into my store and pay with it? We don't do that today. Um, we've looked at it. We, we've actually done quite a bit of extensive research, but we just, if I'm being honest, we haven't found the demand there to do that. Um, what we've really done is say, hey, you know, if you're a business and you want to accept fiat consumer payments, but not deal with fiat, we can make that happen. We, we can basically make all that happen on the front end. And then you only have to deal in stable coins. So that that's kind of the piece that we've solved. And are you seeing any kind of patterns? I know it's early, you know, it's just recently launched, but in terms of the kinds of merchants that are um, expressing interest in this, or, you know, can you talk a little bit about the geographies that you're in today? Yeah, so right now we've only actively marketed it to crypto and Web3 clients just as kind of a, a pilot stage. Uh, reason being is that, you know, they're already familiar with stable coins. So they know they, they have a wallet as a, as a starting point, right? Like they need somewhere to receive it. So because the barriers to entry there were just a bit lower, that's where we've started. We're just starting to think through now, okay, you know, what would be the other non crypto market segments that would be interested in it? What geographies would they be interested in it, et cetera? Well, very exciting. Um, Nabil, before we wrap up today, anything else you want to share with our audience? No, not that I can think of. Just super happy to 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 be on the uh, the session today, and I think you know keep an eye on WorldPay and what we're doing with it there in the stablecoin space because as the product rolls out, you know we're we're hoping to really demonstrate visually through the dashboard how blockchain based payments really can uh, offer an experience again that you just can't have in Web two. So really excited about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, knowing our community, they will definitely keep an eye out. And uh, we hope that you will come back and keep us posted on your progress. Yes, definitely. All right. Thank you so much, Nabil.